Grab your Bibles. I'm going to try. I'm not, I'm not pressed to. I thank God I'm home. I'm home. I ain't got to prove I can preach to anybody here. Y'all have all heard me before. It's not about none of that. Amen. Tonight we've come to speak life. And so I got to give you what the Holy Ghost has given to me. And I'm going to try. But again, I'm not worried if God disrupts me. I'm not worried if God stops me. Amen. I know at a point God is going to move in this place. And so I just want to give you something to lean on if that's all right. Amen. If that's all right. Can you get your Bibles? I want us to read together. Uh, do me a favor. I know we have all different versions that we read, but we need to know that there's life in the word. Get your Bible. Stand up on your feet. Amen. Let's get the King James Version. I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, beginning at verse 7. We thank God. I, I don't. Protocol has already been established. We thank God for Bishop. Amen. I don't, you know, I got to give him what the Lord gave me, but we thank God for life. Bishop, you know that I love you. Amen. I'm here because of you. I'm doing this because of you. Amen. Could you get that in your Bible? Second Corinthians chapter four, beginning in verse seven through 10. Amen. We say happy birthday to Bishop. We say happy birthday to Elder Regina. Amen. We know her birthday is Wednesday as well. Amen. And all of you that are here, I don't want to start calling names. I see so many people I love. I'm so happy to see you here. Amen. So happy to have you, but I don't want to start calling names. Amen. I don't want to miss anybody. Amen. My wife sends her greeting. She's home, not feeling well. Amen. So just pray her strength in the Lord. Amen. But she sends her love. Amen. Do you have 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7? When you have it, say amen. amen. Let's read this together. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, read it with power, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed always bearing about in the body uh -huh, the dying of the lord jesus that the life the what the life. that the what the life. the life also of jesus might be made manifest point to bishop and say in his body now lay hands on yourself and say in my body Thank you, Jesus, the life of God, bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, uh, that we might, amen, the life of God may be revealed in us. In the next verse, I don't have to tell you to turn to it because we're going to know it, Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded, and he was what? And he was what? And he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and what happened? And with his stripes, we are what? Ushama. I felt that we are healed. Amen. And I want to take my thought from this text I've read and where it says that he was bruised for our iniquities. And for the next few moments, I'd just like to preach to you from the subject, the color purple. You may be seated in the presence of God. Just stick with me for a second. I want to give you what the Holy Ghost gave me. Don't go to sleep on me. I promise we, I won't be here long. The color purple. Uh, me and Bishop's favorite store uh, to shop at is called Renzetti uh, Magnarelli's in Philadelphia. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may know it. Amen. But me and Bishop would go out there and spend all kind of money. Amen. Lady Hadea knows in this store. You would think it was Saks or something of the nature. Amen. But it's just a clergy store. And so we would go there and it sells all kinds of vestments and things like that. And everybody goes out there to get their robes and, and all kind of stuff out there in Philadelphia. And a few months ago, Bishop and I, we reached out to Renzetti's to make an order. And we found out, they told us, they said, oh, uh, Renzetti's is sold out. Renzetti's is sold out. So we said, what? And so they said, well, what we used to take six weeks, uh, now with Renzetti's, you have to wait about six to eight months because we are so backed up in orders. They have had the highest volume of orders in probably about 20 years. And they are so backed up in orders because everybody is becoming a bishop. Everybody it's quiet in here. It's quiet in here. It's quiet in here. Charles, they weren't ready for you. You got to turn it down. Look, they weren't ready. They were. Everybody is becoming a bishop. And, and, and it's happening so quickly, Apostle Sharon. Everybody's becoming a bishop so quickly, they don't even have enough material. Sister Cooper knows she's the role maker. They don't even have enough material for, or time to make everybody's vestments because everybody is becoming a bishop. And I love the vestments. I'm wearing one now, and we thank God for it. Amen. But many times we forget that vestments do not make you a bishop. Amen. And I have to preach like this. Amen. And I have to talk from this place. Vestments do not make you a bishop. The bishopric is an office of character, not a fashion show. 
show nor a fashion statement. Your bishopric is not affirmed by how fancy or how long your robe is, how detailed it is, or how much money you spent on it. Because just because you have vestments does not mean that you have the mantle. God have mercy, Jesus. Just because you have garments does not mean that you have authority. It is an office that is based on character. When we look in the word of God in 2 Timothy, when it lays out, uh, praise God, in 1 Timothy, the descriptions of a bishop, it talks all about character and how you act and how you treat people and how you relate. If you wear the clothing, but you don't have the character, you are wearing a costume. Good God have mercy, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Hunter. If you're wearing, if you have the clothing, but you don't have the character to back it up, you are wearing a custom. You are illegitimate. You may be a bishop in somebody's church, but you're not a bishop in the Lord's church because this office is all about character. Somebody say character. Thank God for a bishop with character. Bishop, you may not be famous. You may not be known all over the world. It doesn't matter. One thing I could always say about you is that you have always had character. Even when we didn't want him to have character. He said, we can't treat people like that. I said, why not? Because we have character. And in the store called Renzetti's, they are all arranged in different colors. And, and the colors are set up in a certain way. It is, it is the same way in the kingdom of God. And the colors that they are set up, they denote the amount of sacrifice, Pastor, that you are required to make for the assignment. So first of all, ministers and elders' colors are usually black. They are black. And as the color of service is the color of, of death to self, of uniform, of conformity, of submission, they wear black. But the bishop's color and the overseer in the bishop's color is the color purple. And why is it the color purple? Well, Bishop Ellis explained it one day. He said the reason why it is purple and sometimes red is because it is made after the cardinal bird. And what the cardinal bird will do sometimes, if its babies are hungry, if there's a lack in the land, it will tear its own flesh to feed its children that are in need. Good God have mercy. It will, it will tear its own breast. It will tear itself apart. It will tear its own flesh to give to its child to make sure that you have. The bishop's color is the color purple because it is marked by sacrifice. Good God and mercy. And I know many times we want to graduate out of the colors. We get tired of wearing black. But you got to understand the more cut, the more purple you wear, the more you are required to sacrifice. The more you are required to give up. Brothers and sisters, being a bishop, being an episcopator has nothing to do with your skill set. It has nothing to do with how well we can preach, teach, or even lead. It's really about how well you can suffer. Oh God, I cussed. I said the S word. That's right. Suffer. You have to be willing to how well can you suffer? It is not about how well you can preach. If it was about preaching, everybody would be a bishop. It's not about how well you can preach or lead or teach, but can you preach with that same energy when your heart is broken? Good God is quiet in here. Can you not miss a beat when the devil is raging in your house and your kids act like they ain't got no sense? Come on. Can you still minister to the people that just finished dogging you and you know they're talking about you, but you got to act like you don't know what they're talking about. It's quiet in here. Oh, God. Can you preach when everybody in the audience is sleeping? There's three people in Bible study. Can you still teach with the same energy? Can you lead the people when there's somebody on your team that's telling the people to do the opposite of whatever you say? Wish I had a leader in here. It's quiet. Oh, God, can you embrace somebody like you don't even know they were dogging you out and acting funny around you? Oh, can you handle the people that have a love-hate relationship with you? You know the ones that act like they like you when other people are around, and then when they're not, they don't like you and can't decide where they stay. Can you still preach with the same purity and the same anointing when people are acting crazy? Actually, they say, can you still preach under that? Now look at somebody on the other side and say, no, I can't, me either, me either, me either. That's why we ain't bishops. Amen. Praise God. I can't do it. It's just a certain level of character that is reminded and that is required of us. So brothers and sisters, the more purple that we wear, the more you are expected to suffer. And I'm moving on here. John parses the difference. So take a seat. Don't worry. I just, I just, don't make me preach too soon. I feel that. I feel it. But, but, but there's a difference that is marked now. There is, a, there is a difference that is marked now. When we get to St. John chapter number 10, Jesus begins to distinguish between a hireling and a true shepherd, a true bishop, a hireling and a shepherd. Oh, God. He says, now we got to deal with this text now. in St. John chapter number 10 where he says, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. We, we misinterpret that. The thief comes not, but the steal, kill, and destroy. Now, we isogeet that, Pastor Hunter, because we think the thief there is the devil. It's not. The thief in that text is false pastors, false teachers. Oh, God. I'm Look at the text. It's false teachers. It's false 
false leaders. It's people that are pretending to be in the house of God, but are misleading God's people. It's quiet in here. Oh, they're hirelings. The people that come in and pretend to care, but only want their check, only want their money, only want to know how much money they're going to get out of it. Oh, there's a difference between a hireling and a shepherd. And in this day and time, we must, we must parse it because everybody's getting paid. Everybody's getting paid. You pay people for everything in church. Pretty soon the us is going to want to be paid. Everybody's getting paid. No, not you, Sister Angel. I'm talking about the other people. Amen. Everybody want to get paid. Everybody want money. Oh, praise God. That's right. She don't, she don't play that. Oh, but Jesus begins to distinguish. He begins to talk about the difference between the two. And actually, the difference is not in the money because the people that serve in the house of God, the Bible says they that preach the gospel should live by the gospel. I don't know why people want their pastors to be poor and then expect them to pay your bills at the same time. Oh, God is quiet in here. Oh, Jesus. The difference is not money. Jesus says when a threat comes, when a wolf comes, the hireling will get up and say, well, I'm done here and walk out and leave the sheep to fend for themselves because all the hireling cares about is money. It's a paycheck. It's a job to them. You know how you are with your job. I know you love your job so much, but would you die for clothes in Macy's? Would you die for the bank that you work for? Would you die for the hospital? No, no. Thank you for telling the truth, Sierra. No. I love my job, but I wouldn't die for it. No, no, because it's just a job. It's not my calling. But Jesus says a good shepherd will lay down his life. He will fight the devil. He will fight the wolf. He'll go through it and bleed for his sheep. And he will resist that wolf. And that's the difference between somebody that is a hireling and somebody that is a shepherd. How much are you willing to sacrifice for your assignment how much are you willing to give up for what God called you to do and are you willing to suffer And if you run off and quit, as soon as it gets hard, you will never call. Oh, come on, somebody. If you run off and give up every week and walk away and don't go back, you will never call. I know it's a lot. I'm getting ready to get to the fun part. But you will never call. Because here's the truth, Pastor Day. We can quit jobs. You can quit a gig. You can quit an engagement. But you can't quit purpose. Oh, God. You can't quit destiny. You ever try quitting on God? It ain't easy. He'll come find you. Turn me back up in the mic. He'll come find you. He'll come chase you down. He'll come calling after you. He'll mess up your ship and say, you know what? I'm trying to mind my business. And God said, did not call you. Did not tell you to preach. Did not tell you to pray. Did not tell you to serve. What are you doing over there? You can't quit a calling. So therefore... If you want to lead, if you want to be higher up, you have to know how it feels to have wounds and scars. You've got to be well acquainted with the color purple. That is Bishop's color for this year. But suffering has a purpose. This is not a pity party. It's not a sad story. It identifies us with Jesus. You are not most like Jesus when you perform well. You're not most like Jesus when you preach real good. You are most like Jesus when you suffer for righteousness sake. Did you hear what I said? I said for righteousness sake. For righteousness sake. When you suffer for doing the right thing. Now if you suffer for doing the wrong thing that, that, that you know if you was the one causing all the problems, that, that's, not, that's not making you like Jesus. you just messy, and you're having a deal, and reap what you sow. Amen. But when you're suffering uh, for the right thing, when you, when you did the right thing, you still caught an L. Huh? You've got to learn how to be identified with Christ. Huh? And so now we have learned this. We see Jesus in suffering. Huh? And I'm almost there. We have learned huh, that purple is the color of the bishop, yes. Huh? But purple is also another color. Huh? It is the color of a wound, an injury, or a bruise. Huh? It is the color of bruise. Anybody ever had a bruise before? Huh? Oh, stop lying. Anybody ever had a bruise in here? Come on, talk to me. I'm almost there. The Bible says now, huh? but we do not serve. We're not in a pity party. Huh? The church is not a pity party. We are not a bunch of victims. Huh? Isaiah says he was wounded for my transgressions huh? and bruised for my iniquities. Huh? And so the thing is about a bruise. Huh? Bruises are the color purple for the longest time huh? after an injury. Huh? But it is purple for a reason. Can I break it down for you for a second? Huh? Come on, somebody. Huh? We're 
my Grey's Anatomy people at? Where my doctor show watches? Okay, okay, let's do this together now. A bruise comes when you hit or injure yourself on something. Now, the, the truth of the matter is that technically it's supposed to burst open and cause you to bleed out and to gush out of wherever you were hit. But the reason why blood does not ooze out of you and gush out of you is because there is a barrier. There is something that's blocking your blood. It's something that's protecting you. It's something that's protecting you that did not let you bleed out. In other words, you were hurt, but it wasn't enough to break your skin. Oh, God, I feel like preaching now. Anybody know how it feels to be hurt? Yes, you were hurt, but it did not kill you. Yes, you were hurt, but it didn't get in my head. Yes, it hurt, but it did not destroy me. I'm supposed to be bleeding. I'm supposed to be dying. Yes, I will suffer. Yes, you will have some pain. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know this afternoon. You're covered. You're covered. You're covered. Oh, slap somebody say, I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. He saved my skin. I should be bleeding, but he saved me. I should have lost my mind, but he saved me. I should have been crazy, but he saved me. Should have been destroyed, but he saved me. Somebody give God a praise right here because I'm covered in the blood. So, I'm almost there. So now from this we understand. Because we are covered, there's a barrier now between where I'm supposed to bleed out of and where I've been hit. But Jesus is protecting me so I don't suffer too much. In other words, there is a limit to your suffering. To somebody say there's a limit. Yes. There's a limit to how much you can suffer. You can't suffer more than Jesus. He ain't gonna let you suffer more than him. He died so you wouldn't die. Oh, come on. He died for his church so you wouldn't die for his church Bishop, huh? you can't suffer but so much. Huh? There's a limit, there's a limit, there's a limit. Huh? So Paul says, huh? we have this treasure in earthen vessels huh? that the power might be of God and not of us. Huh? It is spoken of. Huh? He says we have a power in us. Huh? You have glory in you. You have gifts in you. All that stuff is in you. Huh? But you got to get it out of you. Huh? So the only way you can get what's in you out of you huh? is there has to be a little bit of a wound. Huh? There has to be a little bit of a bruising. Huh? There has to be a little bit of a prying. Huh? There has to be a little bit of pain and pain has something in it that pain pulls power out of you I don't know who's hearing me in here I know you're fasting and praying but can you stand the pain I know you're anointed but have you been through pain I know you fasted 30 days but can you suffer and stand in the word of God it's something about pain that'll bring power out of you it's something about pain that brings glory out of you somebody shout hallelujah I'm through. I'm almost through here. So Paul says we carry in our body huh, the dying of our Lord, huh, that the life of Jesus huh, may be manifest in the same body. Huh. So Bishop, we've got death and life huh, in the same body. Huh. How in the world can that be? What a tension. Huh. How can I have a dying in me huh, and a living in me? Huh. Good God have mercy. Huh. Bruising may hurt. Huh. It may look ugly. Huh. It may be painful. Huh. But bruising is another sign. Huh. When you've been bruised, huh, it's a sign that your body is huh, is healing. Oh God have mercy. I feel like preaching here. Oh God if you don't bruise you'll be messed up. If you don't bruise you'll bleed. But if you've been bruised it's a sign that your body is healing. Touch them I say I'm healed. Good God have mercy. Isaiah 53 and 5 says that with his stripes we are healed. So now Jesus has placed a limit on our suffering. I'm not going to let you suffer more than me. I'm not going to let you pay for what I paid for. I'm not going to let you go through more than I've been through. I'm going to hold you down. I'm not going to let you suffer out. And this limit is what Paul calls the but not. Good God of mercy. And I thank God for the but not. He said we are persecuted but not forsaken. We are cast down but not destroyed. That teaches me two things. I got to acknowledge how I feel. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel upset. Feel your feelings. Understand where you are. But then after you know where you are, recognize what you're not. Oh, God have mercy. I said recognize where you are, but recognize what you're not. Because God will always make sure that you're not something. I don't care how hard it gets. There's always something that you're not. I may be this, but I'm not that. I may be this, but I'm not that. So let's try the practice. I'm confused, but not with 
without options. I'm upset, but I'm not surprised. I'm talked about, but I'm not irrelevant. Y'all quiet in here. I know you've been in church all day. Get the pork chops up off you. Come on, let's have church. I'm talked about, but I'm not irrelevant. I'm misunderstood, but I'm not ignored. I'm tired, but I'm not idle. I'm frustrated, but I'm not defeated. So somebody and say, I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not defeated. I'm not thrown off. I'm not forgotten. I'm not irrelevant. I am saved by his power. Somebody open up your mouth and give God the glory right here. David, I'm closing here. David saw the color purple in his life. He talked about it. He was complaining to God. He said, I'm counted. Thank you, sir. I'm counting like sheep for the slaughter. He was going down into a low pit. He was feeling depressed. He said, I'm counting like sheep for the slaughter. I'm forgotten. I've been persecuted. I've been lied on. I've been betrayed. I've had enough. He begins complaining. But then he turned around and said, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. Wish I had a Bible church. He said, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. Hold thou in God. Sometimes when you feel yourself going down, start talking to yourself. Start talking to your soul. Oh, come on. I wish I had a witness here. You ain't crazy. Just don't answer yourself, but start talking to yourself. God. You got to start talking to yourself and speak to your soul and reminded what God said. Paul said the same thing in Romans the 8th chapter. He said we're counted like sheep for the slaughter. But he turned around and said wait a minute if God, if God be for us who can be against us? Good God and mercy if I've got God on my side. I don't need a party. I don't need popularity. I've got power. I've got glory. He said, if God be for me, who shall be against me? Bishop Williams made prophet Mosley change his language. Bishop Senior said, you got to check that Greek because it should not say if. It should say since. Since God is for us. Ain't no if. Since God is for me. Who can be against me? Since God is on my side, who in the world can oppose me? Can I ask one more question? Can I ask one more question? Who shall separate us? You don't get up, I feel it. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall pain? Nakedness, peril, or sword. I am persuaded neither death, nor life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no pain, no suffering, no backbiters, no backstabbers, no conspiracies, nothing. I wish you pushed me. Nothing. Somebody shall nothing. What can stop you? Nothing. What can block you? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can stop you. I've got a power in my belly. I've got resurrection in my spirit. When I'm going down, he quickens me. When I'm going down, he stirs me. And this is how I go through the color purple. So we discuss it's the color the bishop. We discuss it's the color of bruising. We discuss it's the color of healing. But it's also the color of royalty. I heard the Bible say if you suffer with them. I wish I had a church. If you suffer. If you suffer with them. You'll reign with them. Go ahead, baby. Cry those tears. But when you're done, fix your crown. Fix your glory. Because God is moving you up. God is elevating you. You're about to reign over that problem. Reign over that trouble. Reign. Everyone standing. I'm 
finished. I'm finished. What do we do with the color purple? Ikara Mahaya. What do we do with the color purple? Glory to God. You cannot be saved and be in the body of Christ and do a world of work of God and not suffer. This man of God knows what it is. And Bishop, as you said it yourself, this week, the enemy tried, and we know the, 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 the text talks about carrying our body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, having that. But if the dying is there, the life is there too. And we thank God for life in his body. We'll shout out my And Bishop, I've come to declare I'm the Holy Ghost, and I wish somebody back me up in this, that the suffering days are over. You don't believe it. I said the suffering is over. Put your purple on. It's time to rain. It's time to rain. It's time to rain. Enough crying. Enough tears. Enough weariness. Somebody shot enough. The suffering is over. You can't suffer but so much. God said you ain't gonna suffer me. Hey! I feel the anointing in here. You ain't gonna suffer God. You shot that on a higher. You're not going to out-suffer Jesus. I feel God picking up your burden. In the future, I would love this channel to be an over-the-top platform, getting a play button, of course, and reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days, let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gives of any amount or work. Catch up is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? Because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.